Hello everybody, this is Detecting Daddy from Boston, Massachusetts, and what you're looking at is a blank area, or is it? That's right, we got our 40 undated buffalo nickels in that I just paid for. I got the Nicodate out, the bowl of water, the Q-tips, the napkin, got the scope on right there, the screen ready to go. Uh, some of these do have uh, some readable dates. The three stacks that I have in front of you, I'll explain to you. This stack right here has mint marks on it. This stack I'm uncertain of, and this stack here does not. So what I'm going to do is look at these ones under the scope to see if I can find a mint mark or not, as well as confirm on these ones, and I'm going to be looking for any dates that I see as well. So with that, I'll be right back. Okay, as I was just going through these here, I wanted to show everybody the different placements of the mint marks. They're not all exactly in the same spot. Like take a look at this one here. You can see that's clearly an S, literally just at the bottom of the E in between E and C. Now I have two more here. Let's take a look right here and see how much higher that D is right there now watch this one here coming up this one here is even lower and it's closer to the C instead of the D so when you're looking um, for the mint marks make sure that you keep that in mind because sometimes the line the bottom of the rim will come right up to the bottom of that D, E and C and it could actually hide the whole mint mark so on some of those, I would probably, if you want to, nicodate the back just to make sure there's no mint mark there. But I'm going to continue looking, and I'll be back. Here's an example of what I'm talking about. See how high that rim is? I mean, most likely there's not a mint mark in there. But if I look right here, there's a little bit of shadowing. That could possibly be a mint mark, so I'll have to check that out. And here, hopefully you can see it, is another questionable one right there. I can't tell if that's a mint mark or not. Probably not, but you know what? I'm not sure, so I'm going to check it out. Okay, that part is done. These are the ones with absolutely no mint mark. The ones with possible question mint marks actually went up by a few. And these ones here are the ones that I know have mint marks that I can actually see. Now what I'm going to do with each one of these stacks is flip them over and see which ones have dates that are readable and which ones don't. Because the ones that have dates that are readable that I can clearly see, I'm not going to bother nick a date in that side. And if I have some that I don't have to nicodate at all, even better. So I'll be right back. For the ones with the mint marks, no such luck. There was no clear dates. Now on to the questionable ones. Okay, and the same thing for the one with the questionable mint marks. I'm going to have to do both sides on all of these. Just the obverse on these. And it will be just the obverse on these as well, unless I find some with dates. I'm hoping to find at least a couple with a good date so I don't have to nicodate it, but we'll see. Okay, we have one so far. That is clearly a 1927 Philadelphia. So that is good. One less I have to nick a date. Okay, so that part is done. We have the lone 27 Philadelphia that we do know for certain. That's what it is. There was a couple in this stack and a couple in this stack here that I was really questioning whether it was a 6 or an 8. Um, but, you know, in each stack. So those ones here I am going to do just to hopefully be able to confirm what they are. Uh, some of the dates on these here... Don't look very promising, but we're still going to give it a shot and see what happens. I'm going to start off with all the Philadelphias. Then we're going to go to the these ones here that um, are questionable as far as mint marks and dates. And then these ones we know have mint marks, but we're not sure on the dates. So we're going to start off with these. I'm going to set up about, I don't know, maybe half the stack. Do all those. Finish it off. Then do this stack and this stack. So I'll be right back. These are the Philadelphias. I'm about to nicodate. There's 10 of them here. There is nine more in that stack there that I'll get to in just a minute. I'm going to nicodate these here and be right back. Okay, these ten here are been nicodated. They should be done in about 30 seconds. I'll clean them all off and show you exactly what I got. Also, when nicodating, you really only need a very small amount, and you'll see a couple mistakes I made, like on this one here. There's an extra drop on there. This one here stretched up a bit. So try to use only a very small amount. On these ones here, like that one right there, used way too much. This one way too much. Um, that one not so bad, but still a lot. So try to use a little less than that when you're nicodating, as um, it will actually show up on the coin itself where it was nicodated. And you'll see that in just a few moments. Okay, everybody, these uh, 10 have been rinsed off, uh, dried, and rubbed with a Q-tip. So let's see what we got here for dates. First one up, we have a 
1926 Philadelphia. The one thing I will say about the Buffalo Nichols is in Philadelphia, there are no key or semi-key dates. There's no low mintages, anything like that, that I am aware of. And if I'm mistaken, please let me know. Then we got a 25. All right, cool. Two for two on dates. Let's see number three. 1919. All right, nice early one. There we go. Number four. Let's take a look. 1917. Very nice. And you can see on the date around it where the nicodate is actually eats away the metal and it does show up clearly when a coin has been nicodated. That is a 1924 right there. I almost thought it said 34 and I was like, hmm. Here we go. That is a 1923. All right, so far we are six for six. Let's see here. Another 1919, not too bad. Another 1919. Now remember, these are all Philadelphia so far. There is no key, semi-key, or uh, errors that I am aware of. But again, if I'm mistaken, let me know. Another 1919. And the last one for this batch is a, uh-oh, they speak too soon. I think I see a three on that, possibly a 13. That is hard to say. Let me take a look at that under the loop. Well, the first nine came out really good. This one, not so much. I might nicodate it one more time just to double check and see. Uh, other than that, it's going to be a no-date buffalo. Be right back. Okay, so here it is after being nicodated twice. And you can see what damage it actually does to the nickel if you do it too many times. It really does uh, damage it a lot and pits it. That could be a 2-0. Uh, it's just really hard to say. To me, it's just going to be a no-date uh, buffalo nickel. That's the stack I just did. This one here, I'm just going to lay out, nick a date, uh, show you that, and I'm going to rinse them off, clean them up, and look at the dates. Be right back. Okay, everybody, these ones here have been nick dated and as you can see, the area of a nick date that I use is a lot smaller. This one here, I goofed up and hit it too much, so I was very careful with the next eight that I did. So we'll see how these ones come out, and we'll be right back. Okay, everybody, I've rinsed all these off. Let's take a look, see what we got for dates. The first one up is a... Hopefully, ooh, 27, 1927 Philadelphia. Okay, 10 out of 11. Next one, 1919, 11 out of 12. What date so far? All right. Twenty six. that came out really nice. That's number 12. That is a 1913. Let's take a look at the back of this real quick. 1913 Type 2. And you can tell the Type 2, by the way, from Type 1 because of this, uh, this mound right here. If that line isn't there, it's a Type 1. And next up here is a 1920. So I guess there was a Type in there that I forgot to mention, which is 1913. 26. Doing really good with getting dates here. Hopefully, again, I'm not speaking too soon. Another 26. That date came out really nice. A 23. Okay, good. And let's see the last one here. A 29. So we got 18 out of 19 on the Philadelphia's with dates. That is awesome. Okay, now I'm going to go with the ones um, that are questionable mint marks. We're going to do the dates first and then flip them over and do the mint marks. We'll be back. There was a total of 12 of those right there. I'm going to nick date them. I'll be right back. Okay, these are the ones that are up next. Once I clean them off, I'll show you what each one of the dates are. Okay, these have been rinsed, dried, and wiped with a Q-tip. So let's take a look and see what we have. And the first one up is going to be a, uh-oh, ew, not a good start to this stack. I see a zero, so possibly a 20. Hard to say. I might put that one to the side and redo it. Let's take a look at number two. Number two, uh-oh, uh, I see a 13. I believe that's what that is, 1913. And of course, we still have to check the back sides on these, so. And this one here is in 1916. Okay, so we've got two out of three on the date so far. Take a look at number four. A 1917. All right, good. There we go. There's 
through with dates. And it's full with dates. 1920. That came out really nice. Sixth coin. Do we have a date? We do. Another. I want to say that is a 13. Ooh, hard to say. That could be a 15 even. I don't know. I might have to try that one more time. Let's take a look. See the seventh out of twelve on this is a yikes twenty four okay and the next one up is a twenty nine we got four to go twenty six that came out really nicely Let's see this one here sorry my hands move around so much I'm holding my phone that is a twenty eight that is good. This one here, a 26, that's good. And the last one is a yikes. I would say that's a 14. Now, if this one here does have a mint mark on the back, that could be a key or a semi key. I'll have to take a look at the red book on that. I'm almost positive that is a 14. And I'll show it to you in case you can't see it. Right here is the four, and there is the one. I'm pretty sure what that is. If you see something different, let me know. Be right back okay I have these all flipped over this one here is the one I thought was a 1913 I've moved them back to back so I know where they are from when I want to check the dates on the other side if it is you can clearly see it will be a type 1 excuse me a type 2 not a type 1 we want the type 1's because the type 1's are all uh, rarer than the type 2's but that is not the case today which is fine I'm gonna check all the mint marks on these ones here I'm gonna nicotine them and I'll be right back Okay, but as you can see, I used a lot less Nicodate on most of these, except for this one right here. I daubed it too much, and on the last one right there, that one kind of spread out a bit. But as you can see, it's just a very tiny dot of it that you need to find the mint mark. Uh, it's a very tiny mint mark, so you don't need much. In case you ever do this, this might help you with, uh, you know, not over Nicodating the coin. Be right back. Okay, everybody, they have been uh, rinsed, dried, and scrubbed with, not scrubbed, but rubbed with a Q-tip. Let's take a look, see what we got. Very first one up, here we go. Yikes, I don't see anything there at all. Yikes, okay, so that is one that we actually still have to check for the date on the other side. So I might do that one here twice on both sides. The next one, I, ooh, I want to say that's a D. So that could be a 13D. I don't know if you guys can see it right. So I move my finger right there, or is that damage? It's hard to say. First two, very questionable. This whole stack has been very questionable, actually. But let's take a look. The uh, next one here, that is a, that's an S. All right, what do we have for a date on that? That is a 1916S. All right, that's a great one. That one right there. Let's take a look here. And next one, we have a D. Let's see what we got for a date. 1917D. This one right here. All right. And next one up. Two mint marks so far out of that. All right. And I do not think there is a mint mark in there. So that is just going to be a 1920 Philadelphia. Next one up. We have a Philadelphia. So that one is going to be a another 1920 Philadelphia. I'm pretty sure on that one. Next up, we have a Philadelphia. And that one there is a 1929 Philadelphia. Five more to go. And we have Eeks. I would say no mint mark in there at all. Hopefully you guys can see that. I don't see anything between the E and C at all. Date on that was a 1924. And this one here is, oof, I want to say that's a D almost. Let me look at that one on, uh, under the loop. I'll be right back. This one is really tough. Um, even under the loop, I see like almost the ghost of a D. But man, it's just hard to tell. Let's see what the date is on it. This is a 1926. So that one there, I'm going to put back with the questionable pile, and I might do them again. I don't know yet. We'll see. Uh, this one here, 
Ah, uh, geez, there could be something right there. That's hard to say. Take a look at that under the loop as well. Okay, under the loop, I am absolutely positive as far as what this is right here. That is actually an S. And you can see it, a curve of it right there and going down. On this side, right over here, you can see the S. And at the bottom, you can see the bottom of the S. So that is an S. Let's see what we got for a date. 1928S. All right, cool. Put that with this pile over here. Two more to go. Let's see what we got for a mint mark. Yikes. Let me look under the loop again. Okay, on this one here, believe it or not, I can see the ghost of a D, but I don't think I'm going to be able to get anything better than that on this. So we're just going to leave it as is and call it a Philadelphia, and it is a 1926. And we have one more to go with this stack, and let's take a look. And that is clearly a Philadelphia. I don't see anything there that resembles a mint mark. The date, 1914 Philadelphia. Too bad that it didn't have a mint mark. Okay, I'm going to try those other three um, front and back real quickly, and I'll get back to you and let you know what I find on those. Okay, everybody, I have nicodated both sides of these um, only on the reverse on this side because the other side is a 26, which is clearly seen. This, These two here, I did do both sides twice. So let's see if we get anything. Well, this one, we already know it's 26. Did we get a mint mark off of it? Let's take a look here. And I would say absolutely nothing there at all. So that one can just go back in the pile. Let's look at this one here, which I believe was in 1913. I'm not sure. And that is actually a 1913. All right, cool. So we got a date. Did we get a mint mark? Eeks. I would say no. And see what happens when you nick it it twice. It really does eat up the metal badly. That's why I don't like doing it, but I wasn't sure. And it is definitely a type 1. And you can tell definitely by this, you know, ledge that's right there. So a uh, type 2, excuse me, not a type 1. So let's look at the last one and see what we got. And then we get on to the ones that we know have mint marks on them, which are really exciting. And this one here, I almost see a three right here. That looks like a three. So I would say, and that does look like a one. So I want to say that's a 13. Did we get a mint mark? Oof. Let me take a look under the loop again. When you nicodate them twice, it just doesn't always pay off. Okay, I looked under the loop, and there is something there. However, there's no way of making it out, unfortunately. Whether it's a D or an S, we will never know, unless somebody else discovers another way of cleaning these coins up just a little bit better. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and lay out all the ones with the mint marks, and we'll be back. Okay, now that we're down to the final eight, uh, these six and this one here for number seven are all Ds. This one here is the only S there. So we're going to go ahead and nicodate the obverse of these, see if we get some dates on them. I'm not too hopeful on this one here as it's very dark, but you never know. We'll find out. Be right back. Okay, so here we go, the last eight. We're going to start off with the Ds way up here. We're going to start with this one here because I don't think we're going to get anything off this at all, but let's take a look. I haven't looked at these yet. Eeks. Yeah, i um, not seeing anything even close to resembling a date. It's very dark. That could possibly be a 3 or a 5. Let me look at it under the loop. Okay, the loop didn't help at all. I almost see like a 29, but it's very hard to say. So that's just going to be a dateless D. Let's take a look at the next D. Let's see what we got. For, if we got a date. Eeks. That's a 20-something. 1920-something, but another dateless D. Ouch. Number 3 for the Ds. Okay, we got a 1916D. That's good. Next one up is a 19, yikes, dateless D. That's a 1915D. That's a good one to find. Let's see. There we go. And that is 1919, I want to say. I'm pretty sure that is a 9, possibly an 8. I'll look under the loop. Okay, maybe that shows to you a little bit better. That is a 1919. Under the loop, you can see a little bit better. Got one more D to look at. Let's take a look. 
and we have a 1920D. Now for the S mint mark, let's see what we got. Since it's the lone one, 1923, that came out really good. All right, I'm going to sort all these out, lay them out, and I'll be right back. Okay, everybody, so here they are all laid out. The first one up here, there is two 1913 Philadelphias, followed by a 15D and a 15S. In G4 condition, these are worth $20 and $45. I'm not going to see anywhere near those prices for something like that. 16D right here, a 17. Then we had 519 and a 19D. Over here, we have a 220s and a 20D. Then a, there was no 22. Uh, don't have any 21s. Then we have a 23. There was two of those, Philadelphia and a 23S. 24, 25. On the 26s, there were six of those. 27s, there was two Phillies, two Denvers, one 28S, and two 29s. Notice on here there was no 1930s. That is really shocking. There was so many made in the 30s. I was expecting to find 1930s, but I didn't find any at all. Um, there is one more I'm going to take a look at, and that is that really dark coin, as I thought I saw something on it. So let's take a look at that one more time. Well, the second time around for this one definitely did it justice. Uh, however, it's still very hard to see. I almost see a 23 in there, but it's just almost impossible to say. Uh, it is a Denver Mint mark, we know that, but getting a date off of this is just, I don't know, possibly a 28. You can see the two right here. You can see the two, and that does actually, yeah, I would say that is 1928D. Not too bad. So this one here, uh, hitting it twice, actually worked out well. It cleaned off a lot of that crud that was on there. This coin is so dark. I want to say it was probably it's either a metal detecting find or a coin that was in a fire. But a 28D. Not too bad. All right. Well, that's it for the wrap-up on this. I'm going to take this one and place it right there. And that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. This was a lot of fun. I'm going to try making these here from time to time, um, as I do enjoy doing it. And, you know, with this one here, there was absolutely no 1930s at all. Uh, just all teens and 20s, which is very shocking. Uh, there are other um, stacks of coins I'm looking at as far as shields and vehicles as well. So definitely stay tuned for those if you enjoy these. Um, if you're not subscribed and you enjoy these, definitely subscribe. I do metal detective videos as well as coin roll hunting. And, uh, and of course, Nicodating coins. And uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Until next time, happy hunting.